Today, I want to show you how to blur the background in this photo to make the people stand out even more. I'll be using Affinity Photo to demonstrate this, but you can do the same thing in Photoshop. If you want to know how to do that, I'll include a link to a separate demonstration in the YouTube video information. Now we need to complete a few steps to blur the background. The first is to select the people accurately. We then need to separate the people from the background so the two are on separate layers. Finally, we can then apply the blur effect to the background using a filter. Let's start by selecting the people in the photo. Which tool works best for this really depends on what's in the image. I usually like to start with the selection brush tool as it often makes a good rough selection. You will find this in the Affinity Photo Tools palette, which is usually on the left of the interface. The icon shows a brush with a dotted circle around the tip. After selecting it, you can then see its controls in the context sensitive toolbar at the top. There are a couple of things to look out for to get the best results from this. The first is to use the Snap to Edges option. This detects the edges of an object as we paint over them and then snaps the selection to those edges. The other is the Soften Edges option, which creates a more natural edge when we apply a blur to the image. But if you're using the Refine feature, which we'll look at later, this isn't essential. The other important feature that we'll need to use is the Mode icons. The one on the left creates a new selection or adds to the existing one when we paint with the brush. The other on the right removes unwanted areas of a selection when we paint over them. Let's start by clicking and painting over the people to select them. Notice how an animated dotted line appears around the area as I paint over it. This is the pixel selection which we sometimes call marching ants. The area inside the dotted line is what's being selected. It's best to work on small sections of the image at a time as you do this. Then if something goes wrong, you can use the undo command without starting from the beginning again. If you accidentally paint over an area you don't want to select, switch to using the subtract mode. You can then paint over that part of the selection to remove it. But there is another secret if you're struggling to get good results with this tool. Now I've already covered that in another video and I'll include a link to that in this video's YouTube description. After completing your selection, you might want to improve its accuracy. A great way to do this is using Affinity Photo's Refine feature. When I click the Refine button, we see a red mask appear around the selection. This makes it easy to look around the selection's edges to find any problem areas. If you do spot any problems, we can then paint over them using the matte brush. Affinity Photo then reanalyzes that area to refine the edge selection. It's also possible to use the foreground and background brushes to include areas of either the foreground selection or the background. Now I'll speed up the video to check and fix everything rather than bore you by watching all my brush strokes. Once you're finished and satisfied with the quality of the mask, click the apply button to convert the mask back to a selection. We can then save our selection as a spare channel in this image using the select menu. You'll see why I've done this shortly. The next step in the process is to duplicate the background layer containing the image. I'll do that by right clicking on the layer in the Layer Studio panel and selecting the duplicate option in the pop-up menu. We can then hide the new layer whilst we work on the background. The next step is to delete the people from the background layer so that we only see the background. If we don't do this, it will produce a halo around the edge of the people in the foreground when we blur the background. We should also slightly expand our selection to ensure we remove the people cleanly and don't leave an edge. You can do this using the Shrink Grow option in the Select menu. This opens a dialog where we see a slider to add pixels around the edge of the selection. Next, we use the Inpaint command in the Edit menu to fill in the selection. Don't worry that this doesn't look very convincing and is rather messy. You won't see it because most of it's going to be hidden by the people in the foreground as well as it's going to be blurred. Now turn on the top layer again, which hides our background. It's then time to delete our background from the top layer to leave only the two people. Unfortunately, we can't use our current selection to do that because it isn't accurate enough. This is why we saved our selection as a spare channel previously. 
let's go to the Channel Studio panel where we can see it at the bottom. I can then right click on the spare channel and choose the Low 2 Pixel Selection option. This replaces the existing selection with the Save selection. In the Layers window, we can then click on the top layer to ensure that's selected. We can then invert the pixel selection using the Select menu. This means that we now have the background selected and not the people. It's then time to delete the background by pressing the Delete key on my keyboard. You can see this more clearly if I turn off the background layer. The checked pattern you see indicates the area is transparent on that layer. Now let's turn on the background again so we can blur it. With the background layer selected, click the layer menu and choose the new live layer option. Here we can select the Gaussian blur filter from the blur category. We then see the new live filter attached to the background layer in the Layer Studio panel and its dialog is open. We can then use the slider to apply a blur to the background layer. And because this is a live filter layer, it's non-destructive, meaning we can continue to change it as well as closing it or even turning it off completely. Earlier in the video, I used the Refine tool to refine the edges of the selection, but I didn't explain fully how it worked. To understand those tools, watch this video next about refining selections. Thanks for watching today, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you soon for another video.